as as you are preaching now, as you are preaching to the people, you are saying you are a messenger. You are you are working with the God. You understand? Just now I heard too that you say that Jesus will come back, right? On the second coming, right? Am I right? Yeah, that he will coming back. We agree with that, and even in the hadith, the prophet, the saying of the prophet that Jesus, peace be upon him, he will come back. We believe in that, and no Muslim cannot become a Muslim if he do not believe in that. Which perspective you're looking at? If you're looking at the perspective that that he is coming back, or you're looking at the perspective of why he is coming back, which one do you think is more important? It's like a police escort me. It's a good thing, huh? But again, which perspective? Police escort me because I'm the biggest criminal, or be, the police escort me because I am a VVIP. So the thing is that it's not the police escort me, but it's about why the police escort me, right? So the same thing is that Jesus coming back, that is the topic, but why he is coming back is much more important than he will be coming back. You agree with me? According to Islamic perspective, he will be coming back. We believe that he will be coming back, but why he coming back? When you look into what Jesus said in the gospel, and I believe you are Christians, you might have heard about this. Jesus said, "On the hour, many will come unto me and say, 'Lord, Lord, we have prophesied in thy name, we have healed, we have do miracle in your name.'" What did Jesus reply? Can you help me, Peter? Continue. Jesus replied, and Jesus says, "Who are you?" I do not know you. Go away from me. And we look at the today context, yeah. Be, between between prophets. the Muslim and the Christian, who is the one who prophesies in the name of Jesus? The Muslim. The Muslim don't even prophesy in the name of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, right? So who is the one that is being that prophesies by using the name of Jesus? The Christians, right? The Buddhists don't do. So Jesus is addressing to those people who call themselves as a Christian that I do not know you. You prophesy in the name I do not know you, because according to how I'm trying to reconcile this to share with you is that that Jesus he coming back in Islam perspective is that he will break the cross and he will kill the swine, and then he will come and establish justice and to inform people that he is not God. When you look into the Quran, chapter 19, verse 30, Jesus is telling to the people that. I am Abdullah, the servant of God. I am a Muslim bowing down and follow the view of God. Not what I say. Look into Gospel of John, chapter five, verse thirty. Jesus say, "I by myself can do nothing. If God, do you believe God is Almighty? God can do everything by Himself. Yeah. Now, Jesus is saying, 'I by myself can do nothing. Without His Father, He cannot do nothing.'" This is what he say, yeah. No, what I say, yeah. It's a read letter Bible. Yeah. I by myself can do nothing. I hear and I judge, and my judgment is just. For I seek not my own will, but the Father who has sent me. Because we believe all the prophets from Adam, Abraham, Moses, Noah, Prophet Muhammad, they are all being sent by God to carry the same one message. What is the message? Jesus Himself says, Gospel of Mark, chapter twelve, verse twenty-nine. Shama Israelu. Adonai Eleichenu, Adonai Echad. This means here, O Israel, our Lord, our God is one. This is their first carry message. Between us, as a Muslim and Christian, we have a lot of things so similar. One thing, you, you and me believe in one God. True. I believe so. How Jesus pray in the in the Bible. Gospel of Matthew chapter twenty six verse thirty nine. Jesus say, He walked one step further, and he put his head to the ground. And he prayed to the Father, "O Father in the heaven, remove this cup of suffering from me, not as I will, as Your will." He prayed. You you look at the Muslim prayer today. That's why they. How do you pray, Peter? You pray the same way Jesus prayed. You should follow Jesus. By the way. Gospel of Luke chapter two verse twenty one. On the eighth day, Jesus was circumcised. And when we see we among the Muslim, what we do, we greet one another, right? You know the greetings, right? Assalamualaikum, right? 
Do you know that Jesus made the same greeting in the Bible? In Gospel of Luke, he said, Shalom Alaikim. And his disciple replied, Alaikim Shalom. Jesus washed his feet. He prayed. Did he look like, did the Muslim follow Jesus? Yes. And that's why we say, we have to love Jesus. We respect anybody who view Jesus other way, although we might disagree, but the world is not about you agree or disagree. But the world is about, we try to start to understand one another because at the end of the day, Peter, you believe in God, I believe in God. One day, you have to stand in front of God alone and I have to stand in front of God alone. Did I misquote any verses of the Bible just now? No, no, no. It was there, right? Correct. So, it's about, and what Jesus said, what was his main mission, Peter? What was Jesus' main mission? To save his people. To save his people. Correct. How to save his people? He said, not what I say, again, I put it, correct me if I'm wrong. He said in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 5, verse 70 to 20, he said, Do not think I come to abolish the law. I come to fulfill it, to fulfill the law of Moses. And the heaven and the earth will pass, but not a single jot or a tittle will pass unless except that it will be fulfilled. Whosoever who call people, even a list of commandments, go against the list of commandments, they will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever who teach and call people to fulfill it, they will be entering the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus is saying, his mission is to save his people. But how to save? How to enter paradise? Jesus said, fulfill and follow the law, the law of Moses. No swine, no drinking. It was there in the, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament too. And we believe after Jesus, he's just like Moses. After Moses is Jesus. And after Jesus is Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The last and the seal of all prophets. I want, who, I want to know who is that? Uh, come, come inside a bit. It's a bit hot there. I want to know who is that Prophet Muhammad. Okay, very good. Prophet Muhammad, I just give you a very short introduction. Prophet Muhammad, he was born in Mecca. Prophet Muhammad, before he was, he received the revelation at the age of 40, throughout his life, he is being known as the trustworthy one, which means everybody can trust him. That people say, I never heard you say anything like anything bad. So when he received the revelation, among the first thing he do, what do you, you know what he do? He went up to the hill, he called upon his people, and he said, Oh people, if I'm telling you now, behind this hill, there is a group of troops, army, prepared to attack us. Will you believe in me? All of them say, Oh Muhammad, we never heard you say any lie. We will definitely believe in you. So he said, I'm a messenger of God. Worship God alone, the true God that created you, me and this universe, and you will be saved. You know what they say immediately? Oh Muhammad, you are wasting our time. You know like today, we want to talk to the people about hereafter. People don't want to listen. And Prophet Muhammad, throughout his 23 years, Jesus said in Gospel of John chapter 16, He said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear it now. There will come another spirit of truth that will guide you and he will abide with you forever. He will glorify him. Peter, rationally, which religion that today glorified Jesus? Other than Christianity. Do you agree with me if I say Islam? Do you know that the name of Jesus was mentioned more than the Prophet name itself, the Prophet Muhammad name? In the Quran, Prophet Muhammad name was only mentioned five times. But Jesus name was mentioned 25 times. Jesus said, He will come and He will glorify me. Number one, Prophet Muhammad glorified Jesus. Number two, in the Quran, have you read the Quran before, Peter? I share with you. In the chapter 19, it's called Surah Maryam. Who is Maryam? Mother Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. Prophet Muhammad, through the revelations, there is a book, there is a special chapter on the Mother Mary. How the Prophet Muhammad glorified Jesus Christ. Even his own mother name, Amina, was not there. Even his beloved wife, Khatija, was not there in the, in the Quran. But Prophet Muhammad said that, you know, he will be the one that is closest to me, Jesus Christ. He will be the one who is closest to Jesus Christ. Because why? Prophet Muhammad, he is the last and the sealed prophet. He continued the message. And this 
Jesus said, there will come another spirit of you that will guide you for eternity. And he's talking about Prophet Muhammad. Because he said, I have many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear it now. I've done my job. It basically depends on you, either you want to follow Jesus or not. Do you think, whatever I share now, do you think makes sense to you, Peter? Um, all he says, if I haven't been opportune to be close to you now, I will not understand the Quran yes. and the Muslim. Yes. You understand? Yes. The way, you know, we looking at Muslim doctrine is very, very far to a question that now you have explained just is it's like it's just the same Quran and Bible it's just the same whatever that you speak here now is also in the Bible you have explained very very well so I have understood very 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 well. can you yourself really believe that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him just the same way we say about Jesus peace be upon him he's also a prophet yes peace must be upon him because he do the, the will of God. Yes. If not do the will of God, there is no peace. Just like you mentioned peace, that's why Islam coming from the root word of salam, which means peace. Because yeah. God, one of his name is as salam, the one who gives peace. If you do not have peace with the one who gives peace, you will not have peace. A lot of people try to look for peace, but they cannot get peace because they do not recognize the one who gives peace. After I explain it to you, according to the Quran and according to the Bible, do you think Jesus is still son of God or he is messenger of God like what I say to you that he prayed to God somebody being messenger is also a son you and me son of God too yeah because according to Jesus when as as you are preaching now as you are preaching to the people you also are, you are messenger you are, you are working with the God you understand you and me According to Jesus' word, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 9, he said, Blessed are the peacemakers. They are called the Son of God. You and me, if as long as we are peacemaker, we call people to peace, we establish peace, we have peace among ourselves, we are called the Son of God. But not literal Son of God, because that do not be fit to God, but it's like we are doing righteous things. Right? So do you believe that Jesus is a righteous man that is a messenger of God? Of course. Okay. And can you accept that Prophet Muhammad the last and final messenger? Of course. Peter, since you have already agreed whatever I say just now, all the three principles. God is one, Jesus is a prophet, Prophet Muhammad is the last and final prophet. What really stopped you to be the true servant of God? What is stop you? Nothing stops you. Good. You know how far you are? From being a true servant of God, you are you are there already. Just this close. The last thing that you can you you, you need to do is just to say, I believe, I testify, there is no God except God alone, which is what Jesus called Ilah in Aramaic and Allah in Arabic. And Jesus is a messenger of God and Muhammad is a messenger of God. What you already believe, you just say it. If I said it, if I said it, does it mean that I become a Muslim? Yes. You become, a, you become a true servant of God. If you don't want to call yourself as a Muslim, but eventually you become a true servant of God, and the true servant of God submit to God, and submit to God means, in Arabic, means Muslim. Muslim is just an Arabic term. You just, you still have to worship God just like what you want to do, but you do worship God the way how you want. You worship God by following His will. Just like Jesus said, I do not do according to my own will, but the will of the Father will say. I'm not a born Muslim, you know. I'm a Buddhist before. I became a Muslim 12 years ago. I want to worship the one who created me and you. That's why I don't want to force you, but I hope you are very close. You already have the belief. You just have to follow what Jesus said. What do you think? What are you waiting for? Should we? Yes, I will say the Arabic and then I will give the translation. You just follow, okay? Yes, this finger. La ilaha ha illallah Isa 
da Rasulullah Muhammad da Rasulullah I bear witness there is no God except Allah I bear witness that Jesus is a prophet of God and Muhammad is the last and final messenger Alhamdulillah Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar That's it Can I, can you give me, can I hug you?